All right, now share with your group your equation. Just kind of see, is it the same? Is it different? Does theirs make more sense? Um, go ahead and do that now before I ask. All right, so let's go over it now and let's employ those strategies that I told you about. So any type of word problem, kind of see what it's asking for. It wants you to write an equation. What do equations have? An equal sign. So if you were like making an inequality, you know, I can see how you might think that with the budget being um, 3,000, but it wants an equation. Have an equal sign in there. What's usually next to an equation that I ask you to search for first? Oh, yeah. oh. The total. So what is my total in this problem? But that's a great starting point, especially if you have like no clue how to write an equation. Starting with the total can kind of lead you in that direction. Any numbers usually are in the problem, but um the total especially can tell you what should, what operations you could use on the other side to complete the problem. So then what should go on the other side? Yes. Good. I'm actually going to replace the G and the F with um, X and Y because it did ask for that. But good. All right. And now it's not appearing. It's hard to do right. Okay, great. Um, so that's um, a good equation when it's $2 per square foot. Well, depending on however many square feet that is, you multiply it, right? So two times X. Same with the $12 per square foot. Depending on however many feet, you would multiply it to get the total for that. And then you add them together because combined, they give you um, up to $3,000. Um, and it's good that we use an equation for this because it specifically says if she can afford to use her entire budget. So that's why it's an equal sign versus an inequality. Um, now we're going to sketch that. Now to sketch that, a little bit hard in standard form. I mean, you can use Desmos, but even then you've had problems like that before and some people got them wrong. So anytime you're graphing on a coordinate plane, what form does it need to be in? Y equals mx plus b. To convert into y equals mx plus b, what needs to be alone? The y. So locate your y, follow the same steps as we did Friday or Thursday, whatever day, and isolate the y. So would we get rid of the 2x first or the 12 first? How do you get rid of it? Whatever you do on one side. Good. So then that cancels. I have 12y. And are these like terms, the 3,000 and the 2x? So then do not combine them. Don't make it. 2,998 or something like that. One has a variable, the other one doesn't, so they're not like that. Then keep going. The Y isn't by itself. So what is currently being done to the Y? Opposite of multiplying is whatever you do on one side. Good. And remember to do it to both terms because there's usually at least one of them to be simplified usually. So now the y is by itself. Question? Oh, sorry. I don't know why I said it. Good question. Yeah. 
should be dividing as well. All right, now the negative two over 12, can that be simplified more? Mm -hmm. What does it simplify to? Mm -hmm. Not negative six, that would be 12 divided by negative two. So sorry, did someone say it? Negative one over six, common mistake. Kids really like to imagine that the bigger numbers are top. Don't make that mistake. It's simplified. And then 3,000 divided by 12. I'm going to double check on my calculator. Sorry, I'm going to put my calculator. I'm going to pull up. All right, 3,000 divided by 12. Yes, it is 250. All right, now this is something that you can graph. Now that it's in slope intercept one. Um, what is my y intercept? 250. It's always going to be the single number. Even if these were reversed, if it was 250 minus 16x, because the 250 is without a variable, that's the y intercept. So that's the starting amount. And that's what should be plotted on your y axis. And then how do I find my next point? Use your slope. Um, slope is what over what? Good. Um, if there's a negative in your fraction, always attach it to your numerator because your rise would be affected by that. Um, so if it's negative, am I going up or down? Down. Down one in this one. And then your run is always to the right. So the run would be one, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm guessing that's how it is, even with um, it graphed this way with the units being different. So I will verify. Um, down one to the right six, one, two, three, four, five, six. And since this is an equation, do I use like a solid or a dashed line? A solid. A solid. So equations are always solid lines. But again, I'm going to verify in Desmos just because um, the units are different. So I want to make sure it makes sense. So y equals negative one six. Whoever's talking, please stop. Okay. So here's my graph. Looks pretty similar. Um, let's see. So this one has a point on six hundred two twenty five. Let's see if that falls on our line. Oh, nope. So that's why I always double check. Yeah, let me pause this real quick. Because really on this graph, since it's going, the tick marks are just completely really big. It's not ideal to go down one to 249 and then to the right six. It's just too hard. So find points on Desmos that match up. And they do still have a slope of negative one six. It's just we can actually see the points clearly on the graph. All right. Would it be possible to have um, negative answers? No. So don't pick those. Um, the ones that I found were 300 comma 200. On the line, um, and I think that's on your paper too, correct? Yep. Um, 600 comma 150. And 1200 comma 50. That would be enough to make your line. All 
All right, so I'm going to transfer that onto here. Um, so do fix it if you haven't already. Okay, so 300, 200 would be here. 600, 150, and 1,250. All right, but other than that, like kind of not convenient thing, are there any questions? All right. So again, put it in Desmos, find points that go nicely through like the crosshairs is what I call it, and then graph it according to that. And then just confirm that the slope is the same as your slope. All right, um, so that was your warm up. Let me remind you of the goal of today, which is actually the same as the last lesson we did. So this is like a part two of graphing linear equations in two variables. So writing inequalities in two variables and making sense of the solutions by reasoning and by graphing. So to make sense of these solutions, like for example, 300, 200 is a solution. What does that mean in this situation? Good, X is 300, Y is 200. What did X represent? The square feet of graphs off. What did Y represent? Good. So that's an example um, of something that she could do and use her entire budget. Or she could do 600 and 150, or like we said, 1200 of the graph and 50 of the flower bed. All of these on the line are solutions. Good? All right. Then landscaping options. Um, we kind of talked about this already. It says, what does the vertical intercept of the graph mean? That's our y-intercept, just so you know, right? So which axis is the vertical axis? The y-axis. So what does the 250 mean? Zero graph and 250 flower beds. Good. So it's either that when you're comparing the two variables, one is zero, one is like the maximum. Um, or if it's a different type of situation, it might be like a starting amount. All right. So usually y intercept is a starting amount. And this one is how much flower beds she could have if she has zero graph. Um, and then what does the horizontal, which axis is horizontal? The X intercept. So here at the 1500 zero, what would that be? So that's like the maximum number of square feet of grass All right. Um, rethinking landscaping. So the homeowner is worried about the work needed to maintain a grass lawn and flower bed. So she is now looking at some low maintenance materials. She's considering artificial turf, which costs $15 per square foot to install and gravel, which costs $3 per square foot. She may use a combination of the two materials in different parts of the yard. Her budget is still $3,000. Um, Okay, so know what's going on. Here is the graph representing some constraints in the situation. What's another word for constraint? Things that hold you back, essentially. So here's some limitations. Um, again, these all represent limitations. You just have to interpret what they mean. This whole situation is kind of right? Okay, so then just answer them. First, 
alone and then with your group if you get stuck. So in this situation, what would 500, 100 mean? Write an equation that the line represents. What do the solutions do? And so, all right, I'll give you about five minutes to answer. All right, so given our time constraint, we're going to start going over it. Um, so given the new constraints, what equation did you guys make? Mm -hmm. All right, if I heard you correctly, 3x plus 15y equals 3,000. And x being what this time? Gravel per feet. And then Y would be artificial turf. If they give you a graph, that's really nice because then you can clearly see whatever is labeled on the X is that, whatever is labeled on the Y is that. So what does the 500, 100 mean? 500 of what? Good, square feet of gravel, 100 what? Good. So then you can evaluate any solution just like that. And when you plug it in, it should equal to 3,000. Um, what do they need in the real world? Well, that's how much you can buy, right? Kind of repetitive. Um, I think that that's honestly enough to do your lesson 22 practice. I'll continue to look through it if I need to like do more of the notes than we will. But that's it's a part two of a lesson we already did. So um, take a look at the practice. Any questions you have trouble with, we can talk about briefly tomorrow toward the beginning. So come ready.